today. We're gonna learn uh -huh. and play. Okay. Sing a song and pray. That's right. God really loves us. God really, really cares about you, me, our families. That's right. God's always right there. Woo! Let me fix my curls. You've tuned into Callie's world. That's right, boys and girls. Welcome to Callie's world. Hey, friends. I am usually your buddy, Callie. But today, I am Callie Caddington, the fastest cat on the NASCAR track. We watched a NASCAR race on television the other day, and it was awesome! Have you ever seen one? The cars go around and around and around a gigantic track, and they go super fast until someone wins! Victory! So today, it's my turn. I'm in the driver's seat of car number 77. I have my coach talking to me, and I am racing! It's lap number 15 of 20, and Callie Caddington is 10 cars back in the lead. He actually raced like hundreds of laps, but that would take forever. Anyway, 10 cars back from the leader. Psh, coach to Callie, take the inside to pass this next car. Lock and load. Callie to coach. Sure thing, coach. Here it go. Woohoo! All right, one car down and nine to go. Hmm, I wonder. What would it feel like to win? Friends, do you know what it feels like to have victory? That's when you win something. Psh, coach to Callie. Callie, if you steer outside in this next turn, you can pass the next two cars at once. Callie to coach. Got it. And here I go. Yeah, I did it. Three cars, seven to go. Anyway, I sometimes win when I'm playing games with my family. That feels really good. But, hmm, I wonder. I wonder what other ways we can have victory. Maybe the kind of victory that we get from listening to God, like I'm listening to Coach, <laughs> and doing what God says. Hmm, I'm gonna keep wondering and keep racing while we check out our Bible story for today. It's time for today's Bible story. It comes from the book of Joshua, chapters five and six. God was going to lead the Israelites to take over Jericho. The people of Jericho had shut their gates and were guarding their city so that no one would enter in it. Joshua was near Jericho when he saw a man with a sword standing in front of him. The man was the commander of God's army. That's like an angel. He told Joshua to take off his sandals because he was standing on holy ground. Then he told Joshua the plan to defeat Jericho. The Israelite army marched around Jericho. Seven priests blew trumpets that made out of ram's horns. The Ark of the Covenant was being carried behind them. They believed that having the Ark was like having God with them. They marched around the city one time every day for six days straight. On the seventh day, they got up bright and early at sunrise. They marched around the city just had they done before. But this time, they didn't go around the city one time. They marched around it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And on the seventh time, their priests blew a long blast on their trumpets. Then Joshua told them all to shout because God has given them the victory. When they shouted, the big walls of Jericho came crashing down. The Israelite army rushed in and destroyed the city except for Rahab, since Rahab helped the Israelite spies. They kept their promise and rescued everyone who was in Rahab's house. The Israelites were able to defeat Jericho and be victorious because they listened to God and did exactly what God said. The walls of Jericho falling down are a reminder for us that with God, there is victory. Whoa, what a story. Seeing the walls fall down from the city and being kept safe the whole time must have been a big victory for Speaking of that, while we were checking out today's Bible story, I passed six more cars. You know what that means. Just one more car to go, and Callie Caddington, the fastest cat on the tracks, 
will have victory! Hmm, I wonder. Friends, do you ever talk to God when you're trying to win something? Like a game? Or a race? Or anything? No matter what it is, you can always talk to God. I even prayed to God during this race. At first, it was because I wanted to win. But I'm going to leave it up to God. Win or lose, talking with God is like the best victory ever. God, thanks for, well, everything. Thank you for the victory you gave Joshua over Jericho. And thank you that that story reminds me of the victory you gave to us all the time, just by being with us. I'd sure like to win this imaginary race, but if I don't, it's okay, because I, we, still always win with you, God. Amen. Psht. Coach Takali, Coach Takali, one more car to go and one more lap to go. You're gonna have to fake inside and then steer outside to beat this last car. Got it? Callie to coach. Got it loud and clear. Fake inside and go outside. Yee-haw! And there is the checkered flag. That's what they leave at the end of the race. Friends, do you think they won? I guess I'll just leave it to your imagination. Pretend NASCAR racing was super fun. And hearing about Joshua's march around Jericho reminded me that... With God, there is victory. Thanks for learning and growing with me, friends. See you next time. What's up, Journey Kids? Today, we'll be continuing where we left off last week about Israel conquering Jericho. So, let's get a quick recap. Joshua sent out two spies to explore the land of Jericho, and they stayed in a woman's house named Rahab. Rahab snuck the spies out of Jericho later and asked them to spare her family's lives. The spies agreed as long as she tied a scarlet cord to her window and all of her family members were in her house during the fall of Jericho. So that brings us back here. Now, let's find out how they conquered Jericho. Here was the plan the Lord gave to Joshua. March around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them sound a long blast on the trumpets, have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the walls of the city will collapse and the army will go up. Everyone straight in. Now I don't know about you, but that's gotta be the weirdest plan I have ever heard. I mean, you can't knock down a fortified city wall with a trumpet. Or can you? Joshua and the army walked around the city on the first day once and then they went back to the camp for the night and nothing happened. They did it again the second day, and nothing happened. They did it four more times, and nothing happened. But on the seventh day, they walked around the city seven times, blew the trumpets, gave a loud shout, and the walls of the city collapsed. The army was able to go into the city, and they were relentless, sparing only the lives of Rahab and her family. So, what I said earlier was somewhat true. You really can't use just a trumpet to knock down a wall without God. But with God, there is victory. That's our big idea. Let's say it all together, Journey Kids. With God, there is victory. See you next week. Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful.
Troubles are no problem for God Nope, courage comes from knowing God's words God can use someone Like me and you with God